there's a growing industry making money from some of the most vulnerable people in Britain. Women and girls forced to prove they're virgins. He told me, like, I spread my legs. He said he's going to put gently his fingers inside to check on something. She said, I'm having a virginity test. Made to undergo harmful operations just to pretend they haven't had sex. Inspected me, confirmed that I wasn't a virgin. And then they said, OK, now we're going to stitch you up. And the fact that they are making money out of it is disgusting. It's disgusting. This is a story of clinics selling unscientific tests for cash. If she is the doctor is going to write the report clearly that she is a virgin. Of invasive procedures carried out in the name of so-called honor. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, this is, this is a little mini panic, panic attack. Even as these operations face a potential ban, we find a doctor who says he would be willing to lie to continue. We have to lie. We have to say we're doing something else. It's a story of the fear that's driving women to Britain's virginity clinics. For stepping out of line, for not following the rules, you could lose your life. I'm just about to break every single rule that was forced upon me when I was back in Iran. I'm Sahar Zand. I grew up in the Islamic Republic of Iran, where the notion of honor ruled our lives. This meant dressing modestly, never attracting attention, and above all, preserving your virginity. Everything I did today, would have not been allowed when I was growing up. From cycling, to playing with the boys, to dressing like this, to running around, to stretching. Go! What? Virginity for a woman is often judged by the breaking of a small piece of skin inside the vagina called the hymen. So anything that could tear it, even by mistake, like playing sports, was discouraged. Growing up, my mom made this clear. Cut them. Oh. We both escaped from Iran when I was 11 years old. Oh, do you remember that night? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to talk to her about this obsession with virginity. You used to say, a girl is like a tissue. Men, boys will want to use you. Once you're used, once you use a tissue, you throw it away. You don't go and reuse it. Why did you used to say that to me? I just wanted to protect you. I've seen many people destroy their life because the girl was a virgin. But that's not the same for men. Uh, no. They are free to have sex with anyone, but the, their wife should be virgin. When I first came to Britain as a child, I assumed I would be leaving these ideas behind. But over the last six months, I've been speaking to women from communities across the UK, from Orthodox Jewish to Kurdish Muslim, whose lives are ruled by the same strict notions of honor and purity that mine was. You can't wear a dress that's too short because men will look at you. I weren't even allowed to participate in sports. How much draw any attention to yourself? We weren't allowed to have male friends. It's almost like you're living in a prison. You're constantly monitored. These ideas cross religious divides, but charities in this field say the majority of women coming forward are from conservative Muslim communities, and that notions of honor are often seen as the root cause of these pressures. Oh. 
honor is an intrinsic value honor is not just to be respected but it must be seen to be respected it's a public commodity one of the greatest transgressions of honor is considered to be sex outside marriage preserving my chastity is more important than anything else in the world if i go and have sex with somebody else i'm being dishonorable there are specific rules in islam that we are not allowed to break and what happens to those who don't follow these strict rules if you break them you become a sinner in islam you have to accept the whole islam is not a pick and mix religion you can't pick one and reject the other In many communities, even here in the UK, honor is the most important thing, and not following its strict rules can have serious consequences. I'm on my way to meet someone who, for bravely taking a stand against honor-based abuse, will forever have to look over her shoulder. Hazy Mahmoud grew up in London within a strict family in a conservative Kurdish community. I used to take my trousers in and um, my parents used to always say, we didn't buy you those. And I would say, yes, you did. Or that they shrunk in the wash. Her family's determination to uphold their supposed honor has had devastating consequences. Nearly 16 years ago, Paisi's sister Benaz was murdered by her own father and four others. Her crime? Leaving an abusive child marriage and being seen with a new boyfriend. It was one of the most shocking honor cases this country has ever witnessed. I, I can't quite comprehend how she lost her life for wanting a life. It's fear of repercussions like this that prevents so many women from speaking out. But Paisi will not be silenced. She's decided to talk openly on camera for the first time about her own traumatic experiences around virginity. It's what you've been prepared for pretty much throughout your life. You're constantly told about saving yourself for that one man and you know, keeping yourself for marriage. The moment Paisley had been prepared for came when she turned 16. Twice her age, the man she says her parents were forcing her to marry was a stranger to her. Tell me about the night of your wedding. It was so scary because this is a complete stranger. This could literally be someone that I just saw in the street and he's now in a room with me on my own. Um, and I, I remember just like flinching and removing my hand. And he sort of took that really personally. Um, and at that point, he um, like shouting and, you know, um, insulting me. And he threw some bedding at me. And then he went to, um, there was a... Can we take yeah, a break? Yeah, can stop. Paisley's new husband returned her to her parents the morning after the wedding. They were just horrified because the first thing they assumed was that there was something wrong with me for him to have taken me back. Paisley was given a white sheet, one of the oldest forms of virginity testing. That night, after having sex with her husband, she bled on the sheet. Her parents kept it as proof of her purity. I'm supposed to have been proud and, and you know, felt like I passed the test, but you know, I felt ashamed, a really terrible moment, if anything. For two years, Paisi says she was trapped in the abusive marriage. 
just every day into the two years, I grew more and more bitter and angry inside and unhappy because it was never my choice. The white sheet practice, the idea that blood on a sheet proves a bride's virginity, still happens around the world today. It's even celebrated on social media. But research suggests around half of women will not bleed the first time they have sex. Those that don't can be at risk of unabased abuse. That's any crime motivated by the desire to protect the family or community's honor. My book is about, not my story so much, the story of the victims, people that I engage with, and I want their stories uh, amplified, and the films will do that. During his time as a Crown Prosecutor, Nazir Asfal convicted more honor killing cases than anyone else in the UK. He says um, about two thirds of these were from Muslim so communities. And, um, it's estimated yeah, that 12 like women are murdered here each year in such killings, though the exact figure is unknown. One of the abuse is the control of the victim's behavior, the victim's choices, uh, the victim's lifestyle by the men of the community or the men of the family. Controlling virginity, Nazir Afsal believes, is at the heart of this male-led abuse. If you've lost your virginity outside of marriage, somehow you are tainted, um, that the community is tainted, that your family is tainted, um, and th therefore it can lead to significant harm. They think that a man is entitled to marry a woman who is a virgin, whereas a man can do what he wants. If women do make a choice that the men of the community are not happy with, uh, then she will face consequences. And those consequences can be devastating. One woman I spoke to moved to the UK from North Africa with her parents a few years ago. Just before her wedding, she says her mother-in-law demanded to see proof of her virginity. The woman we're calling Sarah is still with her husband, so risks everything by sharing her story. I was very upset, of course, because I know myself, and even my boyfriend, he knows me. I'm still a virgin. Worried the wedding would be called off, Sarah says her mother and fiancé insisted she get tested. My mum, she was following me after two weeks all the time, saying, you have to go, you have to go. I was with my husband and he told me, anyway, Sarah, you have to do it. And just do it because it was near to the wedding, um, just weeks left. So you were forced to exactly. essentially agree? Exactly, yeah. Sarah says her mother booked her in for a so-called virginity test in London, one of the procedures available to women to try to prove they are virgins. But there was no privacy. The doctor examined her hymen whilst her mother and mother-in-law were both in the room. When I see the doctor and she told me, open your legs and the camera on top and the light, you feel like someone's coming to kill you. How did she check? With her finger, she opened, she opened, she opened, she opened, then she see with the camera. I wanted to finish quick because I thought I was shy about this and very upset. The doctor confirmed that Sarah was a virgin and even provided a certificate as written proof, which Sarah says her mother-in-law kept. Even so now, when I see my mother-in-law, I remember a lot of things and I hate myself and I hate her as well. Virginity tests, like the one Sarah says she was forced to go through, are currently legal. They have, however, been widely condemned by the medical profession and are described by the World Health Organization as a violation of human rights. They're facing a ban in England. Ashfaq Khan is a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist. He's criticized the way these tests are carried out and questions whether they're medically sound. 
somebody will examine the labial part or the vaginal entrance uh, and to check whether the hymen is intact or not. Is a hymen an accurate indication of a woman's virginity? And not at all, because the hymen uh, can be torn for various reasons. So I, I think it is unethical and it can have a long-term psychological impact. So you, do you think any woman would ever really choose I, to I, have their rigidity I, tested? I, I, I cannot believe that. But just how easy is it to get this test here in the UK? And what protection is there for vulnerable young women if they're pressured into taking it? We sent an undercover reporter to Edgware Road in London, the heart of the capital's Middle Eastern community. Here, we've been told that it's easy to get a virginity test and a certificate as proof, and that it's even readily available in pharmacies. Our reporter, Neda, poses as a woman who is soon to be married and who is unhappy that her mother-in-law is demanding a virginity check. I went to nine pharmacies and five of them either offered me to do this test or link me up with someone who can do the test. But uh, some they said we, we give you the certificate as well. Soon we go undercover in one of the pharmacies she found. Yeah. Okay, so if she is a virgin, the doctor is going to write the report clearly that she is a virgin. So I can prove it to their husband, to their husband's family. Yeah, yeah, family. get the report here. We've been speaking to women who've been made to feel their value is bound to their virginity. Anyone that was not a virgin was, was seen as a whore. She's just worth less on the marriage market. If people found out I was a virgin, um, there was a very, very high risk of me being killed. Many of these women have been forced to undergo a so-called virginity test, a test that's widely dismissed as having no scientific merit. Despite that, we've discovered there are clinics and pharmacies here in the UK that will do it. The Prince Pharmacy on London's Edgware Road has told our reporter Neda it can arrange a test in their back room. Tuck it in. We've heard how virginity tests are often conducted without a patient's consent. You put that in your arm. Uh, so we are that. sending in another undercover reporter as Neda's domineering mother. We want to see if they'll take the booking without the patient being there and when it's clear she's not happy. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So you need the doctor appointment by tomorrow? The manager confirms they'll be able to provide a report stating the results of the test. If she is a virgin, the doctor is going to write the report clearly that she is a virgin. So I can prove it to their husband, to their husband's family. Yeah, yeah, family. get the report here. I need, I need the moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
She then shows us the back room in the pharmacy where the examination will take place. Okay, so it should be here. Uh -huh. Our reporter, the mother, reminds the manager that her daughter is unhappy about having the virginity test and suggests she's under pressure from the groom's family. Her husband's family are very know, traditional was, and it's arranged marriage. Uh, so I arranged cannot, marriage. and she's not, to be honest, she's not very happy, but. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Some people, they do like this, it's very traditional. Yeah, so so what, let's make the payment now. Okay. Despite being told the patient is unhappy, the manager quickly moves to get payment for the test she's arranged. Would you like to pay cash, you said? Oh, yes. Okay. The manager doesn't question why the patient isn't present and whether she consents. I've seen her, she was, as you said, very innocent and she wasn't happy, but she has to do it. Our reporter is charged 280 pounds and told a virginity report will cost a further 80 to 100 pounds. We are bringing together experts to examine what we found. Emma Cave is a professor of healthcare law specializing in consent. Family law barrister Naomi Wiseman has been advising on draft legislation about virginity repair procedures. Anne Berin Tezjan, a consultant, obstetrician, and gynecologist with over 20 years' experience. Do they have any concerns about how consent and possible coercion were handled at the appointment we filmed? I've seen her, she was, as you said, very innocent and she wasn't happy, but she has to do it. She's making reference to the fact that somebody who isn't there uh, could potentially be under some pressure or threat, which I think is very worrying. Consent must be voluntary in order to be valid. There are safeguarding red flags already at this first meeting. Um, and even as a medical professional, if you have those sorts of concerns about a patient, I would expect them to make a referral. The image there of the pharmacist just counting the cash out whilst this is being said is that this appointment is going ahead, come what may. Prince Pharmacy told us that it has never advertised, promoted or endorsed virginity testing or any related procedures and would be in support of them being banned. It says the patient did not present as being under any form of coercion or abuse and it arranged a consultation with the GP for her in accordance with best practice. This train will now terminate here. For some women forced into virginity tests, the effects can be felt for many years. I'm going to meet someone who says her test helped facilitate what became an abusive, forced marriage. Since she escaped a number of years ago, her family has been hunting for her. So we're meeting at a safe, secret location and hiding her identity. We're calling her Naz. When I was 18, that's when the marriage purpose came from first cousin. Naz says the groom's family had demanded a virginity check before the wedding. Her parents, who are originally from Pakistan, took her to London for a test. They told her she was seeing a doctor for her mental health. I never thought I was going for a virginity test. I repeatedly said, why are you telling me to lie down? And he told me to undress, like takes my trouser off. He just said, if I don't listen to him, then he's going to call my dad to come inside. And then he told me, like, I spread my legs. And he said he's going to put gently his fingers inside to check on something. And that's when I asked the female doctor, I said, if he's not answering my question, can you answer the question, please? And she said, I'm having a virginity test. And I said to them that you don't need to do virginity test on me because I'm not virgin. I said it, I thought that could prevent someone going to my internet part and examine I'm not virgin. But he still did it? Yeah, he still did it. How, how did that whole process make you feel? You feel like you're dead. He's putting his fingers inside. Disgusting. 
So disgusting. Really, really disgusting. And anger. So by now, Naza's family knew the truth. She wasn't a virgin. On the front of the clinic, my dad, he had a smile on, fake smile on his face. And he said, don't worry, when I go home, my dad started hitting me so badly. I couldn't even get off for a bed for a week. I feel like I have no control over my life. My life is so cheap as I've been a girl. really hard for girls to come out and speak because they're going against their family, they're going against the cultural beliefs. Anita Prem runs a charity called Freedom. It helps rescue women from unabased abuse. This is where Naz first turned to for help years ago. When they leave, they leave with nothing. Like Naz, they leave with the clothes on their back and nothing more. And having to rebuild their futures in such a difficult position, with no money, often no friends, nowhere to go, starting again. Anita says since the lockdown, the number of women seeking help because of fears about virginity testing has risen by 40%. More and more girls and women are reaching out to us desperate for help and support as families are demanding virginity tests. Why? Why do you think the situation is getting worse? The groom's families are becoming more demanding and saying, I know someone that's had a certificate, I want proof that this girl is a virgin. And your bag. We're going back to Prince Pharmacy in central London to see what happens when a doctor is presented with someone appearing pressurised into a virginity test. We sent the same two undercover reporters. So first of all, please have a seat here. I need the Neda was your again name? a patient, along with her mother, who was briefed to be pushy and demanding. Neda. Neda. Yeah. Neda appears reluctant and keeps engagement with the doctor to a minimum. Signs that experts say should be identified as possible coercion. Her mother makes it clear Neda is under pressure from the groom's family. She's going to be married next year okay. with her cousin. And they are very traditional family and they put us in too much pressure. Uh, they said, okay, maybe she needs a uh, report. So we, we need to provide something to them that she's virgin. I can't say you are upset by that matter. <laughs> you need not to be. It's fine. If you accept to do that, then this is your choice. So don't be upset. Okay? And I'm quite happy to do whatever you ask me to do. I'm here to help, not to put the pressure on you. Yeah. The clinician, Dr. Obeid, says she can't write a report that states Neda is a virgin, but that she would be prepared to confirm whether her hymen is intact. She asks for written consent to perform the examination and to give the results to the groom's family. Because that is, again, you need, I need to protect myself as a doctor here in UK. So you write down here and you sign us, or the patient, because she's adult and she, she can do it herself. What, she, what we should write? She, she's supposed to write. Because she's the patient. How old are you, darling? 34. So she's, she's, she's adult. She has to do it herself. The, the clinician is directing everything towards the mother. And she seems to only just then remember, oh, actually, you can't sign it. She's an adult. This patient must be feeling, at this point, in my view, marginalised. And she is being referred to as if she's not in the room. Twice, Dr. Obey tells the mother she should not put pressure on her daughter. Mother, you're supposed to help her, not to put pressure on her. Dr. Obey tells Neda she can say no to the examination. But Neda says it's fine. The doctor acknowledges that she doesn't appear happy. 
He doesn't look happy to me. Are you happy now that I was married? Aren't you married? Okay, if it's need to be done, we don't know. But despite clear warning signs and chastising the mother, the doctor prepares for the procedure to go ahead. Do it. It's, it's a bit haram. You are Muslim. I mean, it is. Allah says, Allah forgiving. Allah forgiving, Mama. Allah forgiving. We have to forgive. Sit down. Sit down, please. That does not constitute consent. This even sounds like opposite of consent to me, that you know, I don't want it, but they want me to do it. I think we've seen clear vulnerabilities in this patient. She's articulating that she is under pressure to do this, that she doesn't want to. I think that in and of itself ought to have been sufficient for this doctor to say it's not appropriate for this examination to take place. Behind this we told Neda, our undercover reporter playing the patient, to leave just as the examination was about to start. You ready? Yeah. Let me, I'm not comfortable to do that. I understand, don't worry. Neda, please. Neda, please. Don't worry. Neda, Neda. She goes ahead with this procedure. If there is no valid consent, they could potentially be committing a battery, and in some cases, even a criminal assault. Of course, it didn't go ahead in the end, uh, but still, I, I, would, I would have real concerns um, that, that that decision was not voluntary. Trust me. Dr. Obey did attempt to speak to the mother and daughter separately. Although a sign of good practice, our experts told us they were still concerned about her consent process. Dr. Obey told us she's a member of the Royal College of GPs and the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. She says she demonstrated all the professional values, knowledge, skills and behaviours expected of her and is supportive of all initiatives that safeguard patients and abhors any actions that may lead to abuse. For those who fail the virginity test or fear doing so, there are some doctors here in the UK that offer a procedure to repair the hymen called a hymenoplasty. The use of this surgery by women facing pressure because of honor has led to increasing calls for hymen repair to be made illegal. Ashfaq Khan is one of those campaigning for an end to the procedure. A part of the hymen, which is usually a ring-shaped skin, and that can be a bit torn, and the doctor would cut the both end of it and stitch it together, make it look like intact, and which can get torn during intercourse. What risks come with hymenoplasty? There is a possibility of bleeding. Infection is another one, but there could be a, a long-term effect of pain during sexual intercourse. I mean, I'm not mentioning anything about psychological impact. These are all physical. Yet some women feel surgery is their only option to protect themselves against unabased abuse. I'm meeting a woman who is considering a hymen repair. Even though she's at university, Nora says she's having to conceal that she's had sex with her boyfriend. She lives with her parents and can't afford for them to find out. The whole reputation's gonna come on me and I'll be isolated, mom's probably never gonna speak to me. Earlier this year, Nora says her parents began to suspect she'd had sex. A virginity check was proposed. Nora was terrified. I'm done. <laughs> what do you mean I'm done? As in, that's it, like, the whole reputation's going to come on me and, yeah, I'll be isolated. Nora started searching online for hymen repair procedures. I was honestly so excited. Oh, my God, you know what I could do? I could get over and done with. I could be virgin again. No one will ever know. Have you made a decision about it? If money wasn't an issue, I would have done 100%. Even till this day, I still go and I search about it. 
am I brave enough to go and actually go through a whole operation? So far this year, there have been many thousands of searches online for hymen repair. When you put in hymenoplasty or hymen repair, you get a lot of options, a lot of companies advertising these procedures. Revirginization, get your virginity back. Well, it seems like there are a lot of places capitalizing on the myth of virginity. Our research has found 20 doctors currently offering hymen repair surgery across more than 30 clinics and private hospitals in England alone. Prices start at £2,000. One service with clinics on and around London's Harley Street offered what it called VIP hymen repairs for nearly £3,000, a procedure that can take just 10 minutes. It's run by a woman called Anna Camilleri who seems to connect patients and surgeons. She claims to help women from all over the world by organizing all sorts of packages for hymen repair. We wanted to find out how this clinic works. So we set up a profile for an undercover reporter. We called her Zeyna. She made contact with Anna Camilleri to request the hymen check. We messaged saying Zeynab was supposed to be going home later this year to get married to her cousin. That her aunt is being difficult and she wants proof Zeynab is a virgin. Anna Camilleri replied, asking if Zeynab needed an urgent operation, as if she did, it could be arranged. Healing time would be four to six weeks, after which a virginity check would be safe and there would be no trace of surgery. We asked if she could maybe help with both. Anna Camilleri responded that she can get her contact, a surgeon called Dr. Horn, to write saying that after a doctor's examination, results are confirming that the hymen is in place and that she would send a quote and available dates for the procedure. So we set a date for a face-to-face -face meeting for Zainab and a second undercover reporter posing as her aunt. Our uh, VIP seating area. So, so let's chat. How are you? How are you? I'm okay, yes. Feel a bit nervous. She's very, very stressed. So that's why I'm here with her to ask about any option, information. Okay. Any information. Thank you. To, to put your mind at ease, we prayed you thousands and thousands of young women from all over the world. We have the people uh, from coming from Middle East, a lot of people. Here in UK, it's perfectly legal, that's a normal good money for us that it proceed. Mm -hmm. I love it. The aunt asks, will Zainab bleed on her wedding night if she goes ahead with the surgery? We can't guarantee that, but more than 99% of our patients that we did the repair operation, they bled. Why? Because if you psychologically, if you think that, you know, you had, you fix it, when it comes to your wedding night, you're all tense normally because of that tension, because of the force uh, bleeding is caused. That's not accurate information at all. The women who have intact hymen, 50% of them will not have any bleeding with the intercourse. So this is completely wrong information. It's quack science. This idea that you can tell whether someone's a virgin or not simply by an examination and that you can fix that virginity by having the procedure. And, and in my view, that's, that is profoundly misleading because that's not what this procedure can do. Zainab then asks if she will get a post-surgery report. But will I be able to get a report, um, you know, stating that I'm still a virgin? We can't use a word virgin because we are not, it's a very philosophical word, but we can use medical term. 
Normally we can give you a confirmation that we did examine the patient and we concluded that patient had their hymen intact and into great form. So it's, uh, you know, as uh, virgin as you can be. I don't know, uh, you know, I need to speak to Dr. Horn if we can use the word virgin, but we can focus on your, on, on the hymen. We are seeing someone who is trying to, I think, market and push a, a procedure. I think you can liken that to almost a sort of grooming process of really working on this patient. And I think that is in the context of obtaining medical consent in a voluntary informed way, hugely problematic. We asked Anna Camilleri for a response to these issues. She declined to comment. Hymen repair surgery can be traumatic and doesn't always work. Naz was in her early 20s when she failed her virginity test. A few weeks later, she says she was taken back to the same doctor in London. Her parents said he would make her a virgin again. And I, want, I don't want someone else to come to touch me again. They put me in sleep. So that did me when they did the procedure. Why? Because I was very aggressive, they said. I was like kicking them. Despite the hymen repair, she says she didn't bleed on her wedding night. When she admitted to her in-laws she'd had the surgery, her father again became violent. He told me to shut my mouth, not to tell anyone. I bring shame on him and the whole family. He tried to stab me. He tried to stab you? Yeah, he tried to stab me. Um, but obviously my mom stopped him and my older sister saying to him, if he kills me, there's going to be murder case, they're going to be police, they're going to be people in the community find out. So they stop him. Forced to remain in the marriage for two and a half years, Naz says she suffered domestic abuse and violence. Eventually, she escaped. But years later, Naz is still living with the trauma. Once or twice a week, I'm having a bad nightmare. I can't sleep. It has damaged my life completely. I still haven't recovered, not only for the virginity test, or having plastic, as well as domestic violence. In recent months, the government has been moving to change the law and finally end virginity testing in England. This currently doesn't extend to the rest of the UK, nor does it include hymen repair surgery, despite widespread condemnation of the procedure. But would a ban on surgery be little more than a quick fix to a much deeper problem? Hi. Hi. Hello. Soon, uh, our undercover reporters all... see how we might simply force the problem on the ground. Then we have to lie. But we have to lie. We have to say we're doing something else. We've been speaking to women who say they've been forced to have virginity tests or hymen repair surgery in a bid to hide the fact they've had sex. Others desperately seeking these procedures for fear of repercussions. These women have spoken to us about lives ruled by the threat of dishonor where proving your virginity before marriage is critical. You are upholding this idea of my family's honor, and it's on your shoulders every single day. Would bring shame to the family. If you're not virgin, their reputation is gonna be ruined. 
Charities say the majority of women who come forward about these procedures are from the UK's Muslim communities. The Muslim Council of Britain declined to speak to us about virginity and honour. But the imam at this mosque in North London was prepared to talk. While he's clear about the importance of honour, he condemns honour-based abuse. I think it's immoral to have any, any woman being put through virginity testing. It should not be done. If I've had sex outside marriage, I should come and say, I'm really sorry. You may not have had it, but I've had, it, had sex before. I don't need to be dishonest about it. In reality, they can't really be honest. A lot of these girls are having to go through a procedure called hymenoplasty, where they have their hymens stitched up. Hymenoplasty is very exploitative. I want to fight the society who places this kind of pressure. I don't want to normalize dishonesty. The root is ignorance. So if I can eradicate ignorance, hymenoplasty will not be an issue. Let's deal with the society that dishonors women in this way. For now, hymenoplasty is still legal in the UK. Though many campaigners are trying to get it banned, others fear that doing so will simply push the procedure to backstreet clinics, putting women further at risk. But I've met one woman who told me she'd had the surgery done at a pharmacy. We're hiding her identity. Beza grew up in a Muslim community in London. She says the importance of being a virgin had been drilled into her from an early age. If you are not a virgin, you're not clean, you're deemed as a whore, you're deemed as dirty. Despite her family's attitude, she decided to have sex with her boyfriend. Just because I'm not a virgin doesn't make me a bad person, doesn't make me a prostitute or a whore. So I think for a long time, I would say I probably felt empowered, that, you know, I felt a little bit brave that I've done this. Beza's parents began to suspect she might not be a virgin. She says her mother repeatedly questioned her about it and eventually booked a virginity test at a pharmacy. That's when my world came crumbling down because I was like, I, I am basically screwed now. For, for a good while, I was, went completely numb. I was, I was, I was really scared. I was shitting myself. I was so scared because um, I was like, that it's all, it's all going to be revealed now and there's nothing I can do about it. Feeling desperate, Beza says she admitted to her mother she wasn't a virgin. She said to me, well, if that's the case, it will get you inspected first, then we'll stitch you up. I was really scared because I was like, what the hell is going to happen to me? You know, why am I being stitched up? Beza says she told her mother she didn't want the procedure, but her parents threatened to disown her if she didn't go through with it. The doctor at the pharmacy performed a virginity test followed by hymen repair surgery on the same day. Obviously told me to take my clothes off. My mum came in with me um, and then laid me down, put my legs up, inspected me, confirmed that I wasn't a virgin. And then they said, OK, now we're going to stitch you up. They gave me um, a low kinesthetic. I just started to cry because it just felt it felt horrible, it felt uncomfortable. And, and part of me felt, this is more shameful than me not being a virgin. So why are you allowing this man, this person that I don't know, examine me and touch me, and, and I don't want this done? The clinics offering these services say that operations can protect women at risk of honor abuse and, as their cosmetic, are freely chosen. But Beza, for whom hymen repair wasn't a choice, feels strongly that it should be banned. How is testing them, how is stitching these girls up to finding who they are? It's morally wrong. It needs to stop. And the fact that they are making money out of it is disgusting. It's disgusting. The charity ICRO works to protect women like Beza from unabased violence. Paisi Mahmood 
is now one of its campaigners. It's almost like a backdoor um, and a quite a big risk to virginity testing. She helps train the police and other authorities to identify and respond to honor abuse. She's campaigning to make both virginity testing and hymenoplasty illegal. Hymenoplasty is a form of violence against women and girls, and it is a harmful practice, which perpetuates honor based views such as child marriage and forced marriage. Paisy fears if hymen repair is not covered by the new legislation, it will simply allow virginity testing to continue. When someone goes to have hymenoplasty as a procedure, in that moment, virginity testing is also happening. You can't have one without the other. They go hand in hand and the two must be bound together. How do these procedures go together and how effective would banning both be, given the lucrative sums these clinics can charge for the surgery? We're going back to Anna Camilleri, the intermediary who said she'd introduce us to a Harley Street surgeon who does the procedure. Once again, the patient, Zainab, is going with her aunt. Zainab has been briefed to appear reluctant. Are you okay? Hmm. You're scared. This is okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, bless you. Oh, my God. Let me give you a hug. Oh, yeah. Listen, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Anna takes them to Harley Street to meet her contact, Dr. Gary Horn, for the appointment. The Horn is, um, is a plastic surgeon, and he's a little bit serious. <laughs> but don't get scared. The consultation is at Anna's Mayfair Harley Clinic. Once there, she introduces them to Dr. Horn. Hi. Hi. Hello. I'm Dr. Horn. Hi. Hi. Dr. Horn. Please do have a seat. Dr. Horn makes little effort to engage and interact with the patient Zena. Instead, he explains the hymen repair procedure to her aunt when she asks. And you bring the two squares together, creating the, the equivalent of a hymen. The aunt asks Dr. Horn and Anna what they will do if this procedure is banned. If it becomes illegal, then we wouldn't be able to do it anyway. Up to now, it was perfectly legal. But, uh, you know, but so if something it's might illegal, can, we can do anything. Then we have to lie. But we have to lie. We have to say we're doing something else. Okay. No, <laughs> I didn't expect that. <laughs> but yeah, then we can, yeah, we can, we can say that we are doing labial, uh, maybe, or, or some other surgery. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. Removal of cyst. Cyst removal, yeah. That's astounding. This impacts on the patient's trust in this doctor and it impacts on trust in the profession. This should be something that is referred to the GMC. It's, it's not acceptable. A doctor should never ever say something like that. It's hard to believe that it is done on the best interest of the girl, that she will be in trouble afterwards, he's worried about it. This just sounds to me really, really, you know, very, very unethical. But of course, if it, if it became illegal, it would be a criminal offence potentially that has been committed if he went ahead with the procedure. During the appointment, it takes some nine minutes before the doctor turns to speak to Zainab and not the aunt. Despite Anna's claims, Dr. Horn says someone else should write the hymen report, but he is ready to do the pre-surgical examination. Okay, uh, do you have any question before we have a look? No, are you happy for me to have a look or how do you feel about this? I need to get it done. She needs to. What we've seen so far is, is really lacking, and yet he's sort of progressing very quickly towards an examination that at the moment he hasn't really got voluntary consent or informed consent to do. Okay, so. Okay, we're gonna have to hide you here. 
Uh, you will, yeah, you will need to remove your jeans and do your uh, underwear, please. Hi, I can't. Are you, are you okay? I can't do this. You can't do it. We'll, can't. We'll, um, As before, we have asked the patient Zainab to leave before being fully examined. But Anna takes hold of her face, blocking her path to the door. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, this is this is a little mini panic panic attack. Okay, so sit down. Let me give you a, a glass of water. I don't. Wait, sorry, I can't do this. I'm sorry. Any physical touching from a healthcare professional requires consent. It would be difficult to imply consent in that situation, given that she's trying to leave. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. This is she's now surrounded by a group of people who appear to be colluding to force her to have this procedure done. Dr. Horn told us he acts ethically at all times and never has or would act illegally. He says he misunderstood the question about illegality. He says in sensitive cases, patients can be shy without any suggestion of coercion that he properly engaged with Zainab and does not do examinations without informed consent. He says Anna Camilleri's comments were not authorized by him and are not his views. He only received two or three referrals a year from her and has now stopped. He says he's only done around 15 hymen repairs in his career and has never written a hymen report. Our filming has revealed how some doctors might be prepared to continue offering hymenoplasty if it becomes illegal. Those who fear virginity testing and surgery are used together as an instrument of control say that a ban is still vital. Virginity testing, um, I don't think anybody can stand up and say it should be allowed. I mean, there's no legitimate reason for it at all other than um, to be used as continuing the abuse of a woman or a girl. Where hymenoplasty is being used as, as abuse, um, as continuation of control, uh, it should be without a doubt in my mind outlawed, and that's as a, as a matter of principle. Given that FGM was banned over 30 years ago and there have been so few prosecutions, how effective do you think banning virginity testing would really be? We will have the same issues. But if we have virginity testing and hymenoplasty outlawed, it means that victims can say, what you are doing to me, or threatening to do to me, isn't just unethical, isn't just immoral, isn't just against our religion, it's also against the law of this land. And that is a very powerful statement for a young person to be able to make, or for a victim to be able to make. powerful statement that is too late for Beza and many others like her. It's a traumatic thing to be stitched up. Like, why? Just because they want just because they want you to feel like you're pure. And it's just wrong. <laughs> they want to claim they're doing it for you and that they're doing you a favour. We're trying to protect your, your dignity, your value. But no, they don't want it to come out that you're not a virgin. They want to keep their, their own dignity, their reputation protected. They're doing it for themselves.